Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to be taking a look at some more awesome 30 minute mission stuff And if you haven't noticed by now by all the videos I made of these kits, I absolutely adore them They're fun, they're modular, they're super cheap And today we're going to be moving from the standard kits to some of the new accessories which are these customized scene bases. So I didn't really think about it in advance. I should have got more than one of each so we could see what they're doing, but uh, I guess foresight, I don't have it. Anyway, so we got number two, which is desert. Number one, which is a hanger. So let's see what they're like. Also today, we're going to be taking a look at the purple version of the Portanova, which is the underwater marine type, but hey, Let's get right into them. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want some of these of your own, there's a link down there in the description. And now we also have 10% off with that code that is also down there. And I will mention that is one use only until the end of August. So if you're going to use it, make it count. Because once again, you can only use it once. But anyway, here we go. So first off in here is Customize Scene Base 01. So this is kind of like a hangar type base and I actually wish I got a few of these, not just the one. That would have been smart to see what they look like connected together. So this is, I guess, somewhat like a budget variant of what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is one of the most popular build your own hangar kits out there, which is the Kodobukiya Scene Base. This set is a little bit more on the pricey side. I'll pop the price up beside it so you can see, but the biggest issue I tend to have with that is not every part of it is ever in stock anywhere really at the same time. So it's kind of hard to get your hands on. It is a bit on the pricey side. So is this right here a budget alternative? I guess we're going to see, but something tells me I doubt it. It's quite a bit different and a quite a bit cheaper. As for the price of this right here, it is a fraction of the cost at around 600 yen retail or a little bit cheaper depending on where you get it. Anyway, let's bust it out. So the bag that we have right here is your typical kind of hobby store baggy. It's got a little resealable strip up here or just tear it completely off. So this right here is the base segment. So this is nothing new. It says from 2017. As far as I know, this is one of the standard Bandai Gompla action bases. Next up then, this is all the parts. These are for connecting them together. We've got a whole bunch of different sort of stand parts. And finally then, here are the walls. So they are a little bit basic, not as realistic and real hanger looking as what you'd expect with the Kotobukiya scene base, but they are quite nice. So what am I waiting for? Let's get this built. So that right there is everything we get in the box once it's all snipped out. So all we've left to do is put it together. So putting it together is pretty simple as you'd expect from a 30 minute missions kit. It's just the six major parts that make up the display base itself as well as some parts that put together to make the stands. So the parts for making the stands are all modular like things tend to be with 30 minute missions kits. So you do have a bunch of options in here, but let's check them all out. So first up in here, we do have the base itself and there's one thing that stands out to me in a kind of, well, funny sort of way. And that is, as well as the fact that it is hex shaped, so this is a corner. If you had a bunch of them, it's going to be a bunch of corners. But it's the fact that light actually comes through from behind like so. So you're actually able to see through even when it's pushed together. That right there is what it looks like from the back, so it is very, very plain. But something tells me that the fact that the light comes through it like this, some people, once again, will not like that. They'd want it to be more flush, look like an enclosed hanger. But that could be used with LEDs or something in a unique kind of way. So yeah, depending on how you set it up with lighting, there's just a bunch of LEDs around an action base in case you're wondering, this could be kind of cool. Maybe using red or something like that to make it look like some kind of emergency lighting or something like that. That could be cool or you could just outright hate it. Honestly, I think this has some potential. So just pop a kit on there to see what it looks like. So that is it with the 30 minute missions Rabiot. And there is an example of it with a Gundam. This one right here being the Mudrock. So straight away, the one thing that kind of kills me about this is the fact that it is just blatantly an action base on the bottom. It kind of kills any effect of it being a hanger completely, I feel. However, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening on the back here. We've got all those three millimeter holes. So if you wanna stick something in it, like this one of the stand parts you can do that round on the back and as for the stand options we've this kind of waist grabbing kind of one like this for if your 30 minute mission gunpla or figure doesn't have any kind of three millimeter hole so that will grab them around the waist just like so so you can have them kind of hovering there like i did mention before this whole section is modular this part here is just for attaching both together because both of these are ending with a three millimeter peg as things tend to do with the these kids. So yeah, this is a free hinge down here. So the other option to that is the one 
I have attached to this, which is this hexagonal one. So this slots in and sticks in position. If you want to change the angle, you have to pop it off and then pop it on whatever angle you want. So this is hexagonal, so that does mean only six different directions. You can't point it up the way, so technically there's only one, two, three, four, five options with this. This side goes into the base, like what you're seeing right now. As for the different ends, this one here just attaches into the base like so, into any of those larger holes. This end here, of course, is a three millimeter peg so that can attach into any three millimeter hole in any of the kits that you want to or it can attach into these ones like that right there finally then we've got this one here which is a cup and ball up here we've got another cup and ball or should I say ball joint on a shorter shaft right here this once again attaches into the base just like so and apparently this short one is for displaying your Roy Roy's so if you want a big old display of your individual little Roy Roy's like that right there you can do it so the last couple of bits in here then is this right here which is just your standard clip for attaching action base to action base I've only got the one here but we might look at that later and we've got this one right here which is similar but a little bit different what this is for is for popping in like so just like you would with one of those clips for holding the action bases together and then by using this big old rod right here you can pop that in like this then into another one up top for if you want some kind of double decker or double floor or multiple story display so that's where something like this really does win out if you got a whole bunch of them and I mean a whole bunch of them just like what you're seeing in this picture right here so if you did have a whole bunch of them and I'm talking like 20 30 this could look like a really crazy hanger display a kind of awesome multi-story sort of fortress sort of thing something that wouldn't be as simple or as cheap to do with something like the Kotobukiya chain base but once again on its own or just a couple of them does look a little bare especially the base section right there but yeah that's enough about this one right here let's move on to the desert so what we've got right here is a little bit of a desert scene a rock as well as some wind blowing around so none of these are painted of course so it's gonna look something like this right here and this is one of those things that I should have bought a bunch of again because you're not gonna get any kind of scene out of one are you it's really 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 small anyway let's bust it open so same style pack just the runner in here but this does cost a little bit less than what we saw with the hanger style one if I'm not mistaken this is 400 yen retail probably cheaper off hobby link I'll pop the price up right now so there we go there is everything snipped out so what we get is the base itself two clouds one going this way one going that way and we've got two rocks one slightly larger than the other and we've got these four plugs for plugging up these holes if you don't want them open so it seems this particular base right here is BYO stand as in you have to bring your own stand because there isn't one included so you can use one of the ones from the other kit we just looked at that's what that is right there this is a combination of both making it look like a open hanger to a desert which is pretty cool and of course there's this option as well which I'm gonna go for which is an underground hanger style so that's pretty cool once again would be much cooler if I uh was smart enough to get a bunch, but uh, maybe next time there are more coming out. So first off, I'm just gonna fill up all of these holes. So this one pops in here. This one pops in here. They're all completely different shapes, so you can't actually mix them up. So that is very smart. You don't even have to look at the instructions. My favorite. There we go. And the last one then. That one plugs in there. Honestly, that doesn't look too bad. I thought they'd be a little bit more obvious than what we're seeing here. From a distance, you wouldn't even notice those little things at all. Nice job. So this to me now is starting to look like the top of a coffee cake or something, so I'm getting a bit hungry. But there is a rock. There is another rock. I will mention that the rocks have a flat bottom. There is a three millimeter hole in here if you want to do something with that. But because they have a flat bottom, they don't really fit flush onto this per se. Let's try out those smokes. So we got this one here and this one here. Once again, they don't necessarily fit flush. There is always going to be a bit of a line under them. Is there any way we can find a spot that works a little bit better? I guess if you put them behind the ridges, it does look better like that. But anyway, let's use this thing as a hat for this right here and pop it on. Well, I've already hit another impasse of a should have got more than one of these because you do need this little adapter segment, this one down here, to pop in here for this to actually attach up here. 
here. So, uh, yeah. It appears you also need this little segment down here. There's two of these actually that are holding the backdrop on in order to hold this on. So it seems that is not going to happen. I guess I'm just going to have to uh, just attach this on like some kind of outside, I guess. Yeah, man, if there's one thing to take away from this here video, it's that, uh, yeah, there's not much point in just buying one of each. It doesn't kind of work. That, 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 that's not setting a scene of anything for me. Huh? <laughs> there's something about this that makes me think that this could make an almost cool hex-based tabletop game, and I'm wondering if Bandai would ever bring something like that into it. Because they are reasonably cheap-ish, you could kind of make a big-ish board with them, but uh, I don't know if Bandai, or the Japanese in general, are too into tabletop gaming. Anyway, that's that. Buy more than one because one doesn't work. And on to the underwater Portanova. So first up, there is a quick look at the front of the box. So this is a really cool color scheme. I like this one right here. And that marine vibe is pretty awesome. So there is a quick look at the side, a front and rear image of what it will look like finished. There it is with those awesome little underwater jets. And like a lot of these kits, especially these newer, more interesting style ones, this can be put together in a bunch of different ways. So it's this one here with the feet, or this one here with the backpack sections as its legs. Also, you can put it together as the standard Portanova, just in purple, but I will not be doing that in this video. Also, there is the blurb from the instructions of this particular mecha, just in case you want to know a little bit more about that, so pause it if you want to read it. So there is the marine type Portanova with absolutely everything that it comes with. So in here we do get that sheet of decals we've gotten with every Portanova so far. This is, of course, if you want to label your units, which is pretty cool. The stickers are okay, not great, just standard sticker style stickers. We have all the parts that you would use to make it into the standard Portanova, which is the feet, the face mask, and the kneecaps. But honestly, why would you want to change them? This yellow pops so good. These are some of my favorite parts I've seen on a 30 minute missions yet. And honestly, that's saying something. Of course, it would not be a Portanova without that little round style Roy Roy, this time in a dark navy blue. And the weapon is an underwater use claw with a pile bunker on the end, but we'll take a look at this in a minute. First, let's check out this bad boy right here. So there's the full 360 degree spin of this marine type Portanova and I have to say I adore this kit. I usually love the 30 minute missions kits but there's something about the new parts on this that blow my mind. There is a higher level of general detailing and quality to them than the actual Portanova. As in Bandai seems to have upped their game in the meantime and these look so crisp, so perfect. They are impressive. Once again they look better than the Portanova itself. That yellow really does pop off against the purple as well, and this whole design is pretty cool. I love this one, I love it a lot. Especially the yellow parts. So there really isn't much to say about the Portanova itself that we haven't seen multiple times before. As for the new parts, we've got that scuba style mask, which doesn't really make much sense with a mecha. He doesn't have to breathe, but it does theme it nicely. We've got some new shoulder armor. And once again, the design of this is fantastic. It just looks so crisp, so nice. It is a little bit hollow on the underside, but once again, this is kind of standard for these kits. We've got some little turbines or jet engines here on the crotch. These look really good. Once again, these are molded so so nicely. As for the range of motion, they can move all the way down to there and all the way up to there. The new knees here, they have these little fins on either side. There is no moving parts, but we do have that little square hole there, which you would recognize from some of the close combat weapons. And speaking of which, I might as well go get some. So in the weapon kits, we do get things like this little spear here, or should I say knife on a stick. If you take the actual bladed knife section off, you'll notice that we do have that square little peg. Same goes for this here axe hand, just pop that off. There is that square little peg again, so let's try them on. So let's try the axe first, just in case you've ever woken up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat going, I need me a mech with an axe on its knee, because if you've ever felt that way, well finally, here it is. And just in case you wanted a knife knee, well here you go, finally, an axe knee and a knife knee. But of course these parts can be taken off and put somewhere else so you don't necessarily have to put the weapons on the knees because it is kind of now like an adapter from one of these flat surfaces to one of those 
little knives. So that's kind of one of the cool modular aspects about these kits that an axe is on their knees. Next up then we've got the feet. Once again, these are kind of little jet or turbine engine, which is pretty cool. They're in yellow and gray. They don't move around a whole lot. There's a tilt to the front. There it is, tilted back. So these are a little bit on the stiff side, but we got plenty of pivot. There is side to side. Lastly, then we've got some more of those engines up on the back. These are some big ones, which of course can attach the legs, which we're about to do. These are just fixed in position on three millimeter holes. The backpack is a completely new style of backpack. So you've got yourself an option of three millimeter pegs on there now. So that is now a new adapter from standard backpack peg to two three millimeter pegs. So as for attaching these as legs, you need to pop this little cap section off. And there's that standard joint that attaches onto the elbows and the knees of these kits. So all we have to do now is pop off the back of the knee. Leg comes off like, not like that. Want to pop it off here. And then you can pop it on just like so. The back of the leg pops on again, and there's an example of that being used as a leg. So this has not as much movement as the standard legs, but it still has quite a bit of articulation there. That is quite cool. Let's get the other one on. So once again, there's a quick spin of what it looks like from every angle, and this is with those tanks used as legs. So this does take a lot of the nice mass away from the back, but if you did have two of these kits, you could use some for legs and some for the backpack, and that would look pretty cool. So far, I prefer them on the back, but this is a very unique looking leg right here. Once again, it's always great to have some options. And speaking of which, we've got one more. So as the old saying goes, if you can use it for legs, you can use it for arms. No, nobody's ever said that. <laughs> but we're going to use it for arms. So the process of using these as arms is exactly the same as what we did when we are using them as legs. Just take that elbow joint, remove the cover section, snap in that tank, close it all up again, put the arm back together, and what you get is this absolutely beautiful monstrosity right here. I love this. There's something so primitive and awesome and powerful looking about those arms. They're tiny hands on the end of big old Popeye arms. This I like. They look like big old hydraulic busting hands. That is pretty cool. Once again, it does look a little bit light round backwards, missing those tanks from. We have the regular old legs back on down here, and something tells me that this would look so cool with these four legs and on the back and four arms. But anyway, I'll give you a quick spin of this right here. Oh, but before I do that, there isn't really much articulation to this. So that is the bend there, only to about a right angle, and it goes a little bit back further than just a straight line, but uh, not a whole lot of articulation out of these. So there's the quick spin of what it looks like with those tanks for arms, and this is pretty cool. Once again, I kind of regret not getting multiple of these just so I could put it together with all of those tanks for the limbs as well as around the backpack. That would have looked pretty rad. Either way, this looks cool, but I still like the original version the best. So back to that, and we'll check out the weapon. So there it is, back to the standard version, and I have to admit I'm already missing those big old arms. But anyway, this is the weapon we get in here, which is a non-functioning pile bunker at the end. This doesn't do anything Thing, but look good and we've got this claw at this end which does open like so so as is always the case with these weapons this is modular in design so if you pop this off we've got one of those flat tabs so this is like what you would have seen with any weapon so far for example if I grab the rabiot here the weapon it's holding right now is a bit of a variation of its standard weapon but this part is standard there is the hole in the end this pops on like so and now he's got himself a fun little grabby grabby gun so these weapons do rock. So as for the other parts, this pops off like so, and this is the same sort of segment, is it? Yep, that is the same. So you could technically use this as an extender for a gun. So back to the Rabiot and his enhanced rifle, pop that off. Actually, that wouldn't work. You'd have to put the rifle segment on in here, and then this grabby section on here, and that really wouldn't make much sense. This kind of looks like a weapon off the Gundam Amazing Red Warrior. Like like you'd stick something in here and it'd be a spinning gun on this side, spin around to claw on this side. So that didn't work the way I thought it would. So back on with this, back out with you. And the last bit of the weapon then is this right here. So we've got this little, almost like what you'd see as an adapter for holding a shield with usual gunpla. And we've got this section here, which is the pile bunker, but this doesn't actually have any moving parts. So this kind of looks like it could be used for a handle of a sword of some description if you wanted to build up some kind of sword onto this. But for today, we're just going to use it in the standard way, which is this, this, and this. 
So to attach this, it just pops into any three millimeter hole. So this is the standard one, which is the one on the back of the arm. So finally, this is what it looks like once it is attached. This is a pretty cool little weapon. Once again, pile bunker on this end. We've got a claw on this end. So of course, this can be used in any way that you want. Kind of like in a mecha Lego kind of way, but this is the standard way to put it together according to the box. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And I love this marine type Portanova. The colors look great. The new parts are really impressive. The molding on them pops so good. The yellow is nicer than I thought it would be. It's a very unique shade of yellow. And on the whole, that kit is awesome. As for the action bases, I'm a little bit on the fence with those. Mainly because I've only got the one of each, so it means I can't really get the full feel of what these could be like. Maybe I'll take a second look at them in future if the interest is there. There is some more of these scene bases coming out. Maybe I will get more than one next time so you can see what they look like as a scene. But they are quite inexpensive. They have the potential to be pretty cool. And if you do want some of your own, anything you saw in this video is available down there in the link to Hobby Link Japan. Once again, we do have 10% off now. There is a coupon code down there in the description as well. So if you want to use that, remember it is one use only till the end of August. So make sure that it counts. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more mecha reviews and I'll see you next time.